Hello, welcome to my hobby table. In this video, we will rebuild my Warren Zero, and I hope you will enjoy the journey. Let's disassemble printer down to the last bolt, clean, and prepare all the parts for a new build. The story of my Warren Zero dates back to November 2021, when I purchased a half assembled LDO kit from the Warren Discord marketplace. At the time, Warren Zero kits from LDO were in a short supply, and this was the only way for me to get a kit. Nowadays, I'd probably source this machine myself, but here we are. Now, when whole disassembly complete, I will be able to start working on a second part of this video, cleaning everything and start slowly building back up the printer. I'm actually very excited that finally was able to disassemble this printer. It was sitting on the shelf for about a year without any use and I just want to make some really nice printer out of those parts. I will need to spend extra time cleaning those guys out here, maybe take, take heat inserts out to reuse them but for this printer, it's pretty much it. Since I own this printer, I've changed its color scheme at least three times, but I was never really happy with the results. Eventually, I realized that the main issue was that I didn't really like the color of the gold frame, especially the green hue of it, which was the major deal breaker for me. When I saw new release of Warren Zero 2, it reminded me of my Warren Zero that had been sitting on the shelf since I built my Warren Trident. About a year ago, I finally beat the bullet and purchased a new LDO Warren 02 frame from Vest3D in a beautiful red color. This time I decided to put some more time and the following week was spent figuring out the theme for the printer. I eventually settled on Iron Man theme and time came to source the filament. While watching one of the ModBot videos, I noticed a spool of Polymaker Gold ABS that he used for one of his projects. After verification, I ordered a spool, hoping it wouldn't be another useless filament of which I have plenty on my collection at this point. To be honest, this filament didn't disappoint me. While I can't say it's truly gold, the color fits the theme perfectly. And to complement the gold, I used very consistent Overture Black ABS and somewhat difficult to print KVP worn red ABS. In my opinion, this is the best red ABS filament out there, so it was worth the hustle. Here's my linear rails that I have used in my previous zero build. I have cleaned them with brake cleaner and then dipped them in 99% alcohol. Here's my buff, there's a bunch of little particles in there and now we're going to lube it with one of those. I don't want to put the grease in here because I want to print really fast and this is one of the best solutions. To assemble the frame and ensure it's square, I used an old glass bed from Ender 3 and steel precision blocks. Overall, frame assembly is pretty straightforward. The main goal is to make sure you have inserted proper amount of extra nuts into the extrusions. The build was coming along pretty fast and while assembling the frame and installing the rails, do not rush and make sure align them properly. It will save you a lot of time down the road. And here is my Iron Man Edition Dragon Burner print head. As a fast prototyping machine, this printer will mostly be printing with 0.6 bond tag high flow nozzle and Dragon Ultra high flow hot end. The idea was use Dragon Burner with an Orbiter 1.5 extruder. And that was actually the first part I assembled to see how the colors would match. After some fiddling, I decided to use the lighter Sherpa mini extruder, since the Orbiter required extra work to fix. In my previous Warren Zero build, I struggled with original bed frame, and even after trying origami frame, the printer kept losing Z-axis alignment. While preparing for this build, I discovered Physic full metal bed, which turned out to be much better than other solutions I have tried. I highly recommend it, and it, this is not an advertisement. Unfortunately, my Z motor lead screw isn't the straightest one, but I haven't noticed any significant related issues, so I kept it. Back when I originally received the kit, I tried the original LDO motors for X and Y axis, but due to brutal VFAs, I replaced them with cheaper stepper online motors, which are somewhat better in terms of VFAs, but still do not completely solve the issue. Warren Zero Tiny 1.3 inch screen is an essential style part of the printer and I decided to spend extra time making sure it looks good. I have used multi-color printing with manual filament swaps and end result was amazing. 
To make it work on the printer, I only had to solder a GST connector for a Stelfier connection and make a custom USB cable. To simplify the tool head wiring, Big 3 Tech sponsored me with EBB36 CAN board, which I actually used in USB mode, where we used the CAN low and high pins to pass through the USB D plus and D minus signals. This approach allows me to have less wiring and eliminate the need to run an external power supply for my Raspberry Pi. Now I can use UART connection to power up Raspberry Pi and feed data through. I was so excited that I even make a short video showing how it works works, which you can find on my YouTube channel. Wiring was done and we're ready to power up the printer. I'm going to do a first power up right now. Everything plugged in, I have wired everything. Raspberry Pi is going to be running via UART. I also have powered the tool headboard. I just started. This is started. The Raspberry Pi started and the board right here is started. The time came to add final touches. I spent extra money on RGB matchsticks and placed addressable LEDs into the tool head and that is where I messed up. This is one of those moments where you're a complete idiot. Uh, I just put it all back together, zip ties and everything. And one more, I have crushed this wire. This is not good. We assembled and wired the printer and after basic historical calibration, let's start the first print. I have finished all the configuration, all the wiring, and now we are going to home the device. Control, home all. Worth mentioning, it doesn't have end stops on X and Y axis, and now it's homing using sensorless homing. We only have Z end stop out there on the bottom. And you can see it's going to reach it, and the top position will be go back as a zero. You can see the lead screw is not the straightest one. It doesn't affect anything. Works fine. Perfect. Now we're going to try and print something. Like always, it is two layers. It's preheating right now. And I have 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I have calibrated extruder. And now we will see what's gonna happen next. I'm a bit nervous because it's the first time I'm running this build. Take off some of it, and we're going to see how well it's gonna go. All right, it's better than I expected for the first time. Looks like I have calibrated it pretty well on the eye. I will need to add the skirt to the prints, but other than that. Printing. Back then I didn't notice it, but in the proper configuration your tool head should park in the back position after finishing the print. Following the diagram provided by Warren Design Team, you can determine the exact issue in your motor configuration. In my case, the X and Y motors were swapped, and I realized this was the problem when I printed the Warren calibration cube, and the print came out inverted. After the first print was successful, the final step was to screw in panels. However, during the upgrade from Warren 0 to Warren 0.2, the top hat was changed, and I needed to figure out what to do with the panels. In my garage, I found a large piece of plexiglass left over from IKEA lock enclosure I built a few years ago, so I cut it to size. I used the blade with a broken tip, so that instead of cutting, it would scratch the glass and to make it consistent, I supported the blade with metal ruler, which actually worked pretty well. Unfortunately, I was too excited that it worked so well and messed up twice in a row. First when I cut the glass to the wrong size, and second when the blade slipped and scratched the top of the glass. I decided to frost the scratch with a sandpaper around the perimeter and got pretty interesting result, which I actually like. And the rest of the panels have to be cleaned with isopropyl alcohol from old VHB tape. I used double-sided VHB tape and after sticking all the plastic parts to the panels, it was time for my most hated step, screwing the panels to the printer. My original LDO kit came with square nuts to fit into the extrusions and these guys slide around a lot, making this tip pretty annoying. If you are building a new Warren Zero 2, I highly recommend using the non-drop nuts mod. Totally forgot about this mod and there is no way for me to replace nuts without taking most of the machine apart. 
Let's not forget we will be printing ABS on this printer, and I wanted something where I could place an arc reactor logo. For that, I picked a new element reactor version to represent the rebuild of my printer. At this point, the printer was fully assembled and I spent the next few days adding small touches to the build, adjusting LED effects, tuning slicer profiles and overall adding final touches and polishing the look of the printer. Everything came down to the final moment. I sliced the worn test cube, loaded the filament and in about 27 minutes I got this result. This build journey has come to the end, and I think this machine turned out pretty good. Personally, I enjoyed this build from start to finish. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. To help my channel grow, subscribe, leave likes, and I see you at the next one. Bye-bye.